Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to church this morning. It's so good to see you in God's house. We're going to stand to our feet and worship Him together. You know, it's Psalms. It says that we can enter God's gates with thanksgiving in our hearts and His courts with praise. So we're going to do that this morning. We're going to give Him praise, all right? Come on, let's sing this. Wandering into the night Worn in a place to hide This weary soul Is back upon it And I try with all my might But I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting A back upon it Just when I ran out of the road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not alone. Pick me up, turn me around, place my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, heal my heart. I cannot deny I cannot deny what I see Got no choice but to believe My doubts are burning Like ashes in the wind So, so long to my old friends Burning in bitterness You can't just keep it moving Nah, you ain't welcome here Till I walk the streets of gold I'll sing of how you saved my soul This way was sun has found its way back
of Jesus come alive in the name of Jesus this is a house of miracles we bring everything to the feet of Jesus everything in the name of Jesus this is a house of miracles come on let's sing we sing come alive in the name of Jesus come alive
awesome miracles today, don't you? Amen. Let's thank God for who He is. He's such a good God. Amen. So great to worship with you, faith family. It's good to be in God's house with God's people, isn't it? Amen. Well, you know, in John chapter 2, Jesus did his very first miracle. He was at a wedding, and they ran out of wine. And you know, in the Jewish culture, it was embarrassing, and it was humiliating to run out of something when you were hosting people. Have you ever had that happen to you? I have. Not good. <laughs> but anyway... Mary, if you know the story, was there, and uh, she knew her boy, Jesus, could help. So she called the servants, the scripture says, and she said to them, do whatever he tells you to do. Can we say that together? Do whatever he tells you to do. And all they had to do was fill up six jars of water, six jars with water, and they did it. And when they poured out the water, it wasn't water anymore. It was the best tasting wine of the wedding. Amen. And the host didn't know where it came from, but the servants knew. They did what they could do, and Jesus did what they couldn't do. You know, I just want to encourage, encourage us all today because we all are believing for some big things in our life, maybe big miracles, maybe with our marriage maybe with one of our children, maybe in our body we're fighting some health challenges, maybe in just a circumstance of our life. I just want us all to encourage us all to take to heart the words of Mary, whatever he tells us to do, to do it. Often big answers to prayer depend on little acts of obedience on our part, right? It's just going that extra mile to love somebody. It's, you know, like giving that little bit of extra that God is asking. Maybe it's stepping out in a faith where we're afraid, stepping out in faith where we have fear in an area. I tell you, God wants to turn our water into wine. Amen? He wants to bring big blessings and big answers to prayer out of our little acts of obedience. Amen? We know God can, and that's why we pray, and that's why we're going to pray today. How many of you know it makes a difference to pray? Amen. Well, I'm going to give you a good report before we pray. Do you like good reports? I do. Okay, listen to this prayer, and I think we're going to have a uh, praise report. Uh, after going through the painful loss of two baby boys, Samantha and Isaac Long welcomed their third son, Ryan, on Good Friday at 34 weeks. After weeks in, NIC, in the NICU, uh, he's getting stronger and doing well. This past week, they removed all feeding tubes and oxygen, and they're looking forward to bringing Ryan home and dedicating, dedicating him here at Faith Family Church. Let's thank God for that. Can we do that? Amen. Well, we're going to pray today. The request will be on the screen. Before we pray, I just want to encourage us all to remember that this is voting week. And uh, just, you know, we want to do our part to pray, to educate ourselves, and to vote. Amen. To do our part. It's a privilege to be able to vote. So that is May 1st and 2nd, early voting, and then on the 6th of May. So uh, you can pick up some flyers on that on our tables as you leave today. But uh, how many of you remember to do that, right, this week, if you haven't already done it? So let's pray over these requests that are on the, on the uh, screen today. Father, you tell us that it is your good pleasure to give us the kingdom. God, you want us to experience heaven on earth. God, we pray for this couple wanting to conceive a child. Man, one, that's one of the greatest desires that, that we have. And Lord Jesus, you want to meet that desire. We pray that you would correct whatever's keeping them from conceiving and open her womb. We thank you for making her, as the scripture says, a happy mother of children. God, we pray for our friend and others asking for mental and physical health and healing. God, the scripture says you keep in perfect peace him whose mind is set up on you. So Lord, we ask you to reveal truth that sets minds at rest in Jesus' name. And Father, we release your healing presence into bodies that are sick. God, we pray that you would show each one the pathway of healing that you have for them. And lastly, Lord, we thank you for our region. We thank you for Victoria, Texas. God, for the responsibility and the privilege of choosing leaders that will rule well. God, you said when the righteous are in authority that the people rejoice. Help us pray, vote, and do our part of making this a godly place to live and to raise our families. We pray in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Well, we're going to worship with one more song.
Jesus is the most valuable thing in your life, why don't you let him know this morning? Amen. Jesus is everything. Well, junior high kids, where are you at? Are you in the house this morning, junior high? Hey, listen, you guys are going to be dismissed, and y'all are going to have ice cream sandwiches. Yum. So you guys are dismissed, and the rest of us, I want you to find two people that you don't know. Go learn their name, and then you guys can be seated. Go find two people, y'all. Learn their name, and then you can be seated. Good job, everybody. Well, welcome to God's house. Are you excited to be here this morning? Awesome. If you are visiting for the first time, whether you're here in the room or watching online, welcome to Faith Family. And we're just so excited that you chose to worship with us today. And listen, we would love to know you and connect with you beyond today's service because we are so much more than what you see here today. And we really are so glad that you're here. You know, we would love the opportunity, like I said, to know you and serve you. We believe that we have something for every person here to help you know God better, find life, build friendships, and make a difference. Those are the four pillars of who we are here at Faith Family Church and what we strive to do and be for people. So if that's you this morning and you're looking for a church family to call home, to get connected to, man, we want to help. So we've prepared several ways for you to do that this morning for us to just learn a little bit about you. There's an orange card in every seat back. You can grab that right now. Or you can take out your phone and scan that QR code that you see right there as well. And when that pulls up on your phone, just click I'm new. Or you can follow this link coming up on the screen right behind me. Any of these ways, you'll just fill out just a little bit of information so that we can identify how we can serve you as a church family. Don't worry, we're not going to spam you and call you a bunch of times, but we do promise you that we will serve you. Everybody say serve. So that's what we're here to do for you. And to say thank you for being here today, we have a special gift for you back in our Welcome Hub. It's right through these doors in our Connection Center. When you leave today, head back there, get that sweet little gift. Our team will be back there to meet you, greet you, give you a tour if you'd like, answer all the questions that you may have about Faith Family. We just want to make sure that you know, number one, you're welcome in this place, and two, we want to know you. So Faith Family, let's give them all a great big welcome into God's house this morning. We're glad you're here. Well, good morning, everybody. It is so good to see you. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, you are looking good today. Would you go ahead and do that? (sighs) See, there's a reason that Faith Family got voted the best place for singles to meet, right? (laughs) And I think, actually, we were voted the second best place. So how many of you think we need to make it our mission to show people why church is better than meeting people at Barney's or, well, I don't know what it was, but... How many of you know church is the greatest place to meet people? Come on, give me a good amen, right? You know, as I was praying for our church this week, I just felt in my heart that I I wanted to thank you for being a person who does your part so that God can do a great work in your life and he can do great things for you and God can do great things through us together as the body of Christ. If you're new, my name is Jim Graff, and I'm the lead pastor here at Faith Family Church, and I have been for 33 years and seven months, y'all. How many of you know that? That's a long time, right? It's gone really, really fast, but we want you to know we exist to help you know God through our weekend services, to find life as you learn to experience his presence through effectively reading your Bible and learning how to pray. And then to enjoy community because of the godly, loving, supportive relationships you have an opportunity to build here at Faith Family. And then to make a difference for the kingdom of God through discovering your gifts and combining them with the gifts of others to get God's work done in the world. And uh, this morning I'm going to give everybody an opportunity to bless God's work with our tithes and offerings. But before I do, I want to ask for special prayer for the next 91 days. Everybody say 91 days. 
And the reason I'm asking for special prayer is I told you a few weeks ago that Pastor Larry and Miss Jenny and Miss Amy Duffley are all retiring this summer. And they've been a big part of our staff for 20 to 30 years. Can we give them a big hand for how hard they've worked and all the good that they've done? And so, of course, I've been in the midst of lots of interviews the last uh, month or so. And I've got more interviews that are ahead of me. But can I tell you this? I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit so strong, and I can tell he's bringing every person that we need to fulfill the purposes that he has in his heart for our church family, and I also feel the passion he has for me to to lead this church family to the place where all of our ministries are at the place of excellence and maturity that God wants them at so that people's lives are blessed the way that God wants people's lives to be blessed. So as you all know, I'm called a lead pastor. And in this season, there's going to be a lot of lead. And I can tell you I'm passionate because the Lord's had me invest between 85,000 to 90,000 hours of my professional career in this church family. And can I just tell you this? I am so grateful for the flock that you've become. How many of you know God is protecting lives and he's blessing lives because of how the teachers and faith family have come together and they're feeding people the truth of God's word? Are you thankful for all of our teachers, huh? And then I want to thank you for the family that you've become, all of our captains and all of our leaders and just the love and support that people are receiving as they go through the storms of life. And then I want to thank you for the body that you're being because you know what? God's doing great things locally, nationally, and globally now through Faith Family Church. And that doesn't happen without people who recognize we're called to be a part of the body of Christ. Amen? So I want to thank you for your prayers. This is going to be a real special 91-day season for me, getting the church ready for the next six years that I'm looking forward to in terms of being the lead pastor. But listen, I, uh, I just want to say to you guys that I'm so excited, first of all, because of the generations. Look across this building. Aren't you grateful for how God's gathered us out of every generation and he has us ready for the best season we've ever gone into? Come on, somebody. He's excited about that as I am this morning. I'm so excited about that. And I just want to ask for these 91 days, I want to let you know, during this time, my sons are going to be sharing half of the weekend services. They'll be teaching. How many of y'all love Michael and Jeffrey and, and the teaching they bring, right? And then also on Wednesday nights, I'll be doing half the teaching Sunday, half the teaching Wednesdays. Uh, Miss Tamara, Pastor Tony, Pastor Larry will be sharing the teaching on Wednesday nights. But I just want you to pray this summer as God gets us ready for a new season. And I want to say to our captains and leaders that May 7th is a very special day. We're going to have a, a training on that evening. I want you to mark your calendars for this training because since COVID, really, I've been studying great transformational leaders in the history of Christianity and those people who brought the leadership God needed whenever society needed church the most and I believe God's getting ready to take us into such a great season and I just want to encourage all of our captains and our leaders you you may be a dream team leader you may be a connect group leader you may be a life care leader hey let's gather together on May the 7th And how many of you are glad that God is raising up his church all over the world and the gates of hell can't prevail against the church that he's building? Amen. Let's prepare our gifts for the Lord's work. your gift today, whether you're given by phone or envelope or whatever way you're given, let's, let's pray over it this morning. God, we're 
Uh, Lord, thankful for a place that we can learn to love you and live for the, your purposes, Lord, so that you bring about good in our life. Thank you for the great teaching we get each week. Father, thank you for the rich fellowship. And Lord, just the, the, the privilege to be part of a caring environment. God, we bring our tithes and offerings to you, Lord, knowing that you have more you want to do in us, for us, and through us. So God, thank you for generous people in this church family, generous toward your house. Father, generous toward the work of God on this earth. Lord, I pray that you'll bless every gift and every giver today. We give with happy hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. So how to cook and recently she's been teaching me how to remove stains. How to love Jesus. Don't ever give up praying for somebody. One day we just all wanted to eat grilled chicken, but we didn't have a griller, but we had a microwave. It blew the microwave, but we ate grilled chicken. I give my mom all credit for where I'm at today. She woke up at 4 a.m. every day, and she showed this hard work and perseverance. I called her right before this. I don't call my mom, I text her. I just text about me loving her, and sometimes she goes somewhere where I don't know where she's going. I love her, and I hope that I can be half the mom that she is one day. I love you with all my heart. I love you, Mommy. Church family, graduation season is almost here. This is a milestone that commemorates thousands of days of hard work, memories, and experiences for students. That's why we hold Graduation Sunday, a weekend to celebrate upcoming graduates, honor them among family and church family, pray over their future, and give them a special gift. If you're an upcoming graduate or a parent of a graduate, you can learn more or register for Graduation Sunday today at myffc.com events. Get ready for a day filled with fun, friendly competition, food, unforgettable memories, and more. This is one of our most favorite and oldest church family traditions with something for every age. The event is completely free with food available for purchase on site. So mark your calendar, grab your lawn chair, and don't miss Faith Family Day 2023. Everybody, anybody excited to be in the house of God this morning? I know I am. I love being at church. I love being with you guys. And I'm excited because we're continuing our series, The Great Invitation. Help me out if you're out there. You know I like to talk to you. Everybody say, The Great, the great. Invitation. We've been looking at various invitations God gives us as His people. So two weeks ago, Pastor Mike talked about the Holy Spirit. And everything that we're invited to with a relationship from the Holy Spirit. Last week, the big dog himself in the pouring rain talked about uh, how God's work should wow us. Now, I think they're conspiring against me because they gave me my topic and what I get to preach on. And it's like not very popular. So take it up with him. Um, but today I'm going to talk to you about how sometimes... God's invitation to us is an invitation to wait, <laughs> right? Ain't nobody like to, I come to this conclusion. We don't like to wait. In fact, I think we hate the wait. Everybody say that. We hate the wait. And I'm not talking about like that, you know, rare occasion where it's silent and you have nothing to do and you can just chill. Let me give you some examples of what I'm talking about when I say we hate the wait. Let's say it's Friday night. It's date night. So you pull into the restaurant parking lot and you notice, okay, there's a couple of parking spots, but it's pretty full. So the first thing you'll probably do 
is you'll probably walk into the lobby, look at the hostess and say, yes, excuse me, how long is the... Exactly. And if they say more than 20 minutes, bye. What a burger tonight. Because I came here because I'm hungry, not because I'm patient, okay? Or, or you go to the doctor's office, right? Oh, I do not like to wait in the doctor's office at all. It's gross. Everyone's sick. They give you 80 papers to fill out, and every page asks for the same information. I told you where I lived on page two, three, four, five, and six. Right? There's always that one kid that's got a runny nose in the way there. He just won't stop staring at you. He just, you're just like, go, go, get him in there. But doctor's offices, restaurants, they know that the wait is easier if we have something to do. That's why they give us stuff to do. You remember when you were a kid and you went to a restaurant and they had like the coloring menu? I'm about to have a kid just so I could get one of those things again. I like those. You got to color, find the hidden object, or at the doctor's office. There's magazines everywhere. I never read magazines, but at the doctor's office I do. I'm like, better homes and Yes. My crabgrass, I need, a, I need a look at the gardening section. No, I don't. I really don't. I just hate the wait. One more time, everybody say, we hate yeah. the wait. But doctors and restaurants, they give us something to do because they know the wait is a lot easier if we have something to do while we're in it, Right? And here's what I want to tell you today. God knows that too. Sometimes the invitation from God is an invitation to wait. But just because we're in a waiting season, or just because there's something coming up that we're excited about, but till it's there, we're just kind of waiting. That doesn't mean we have nothing to do. God's will is always for you right now. It's not like, oh, when I get, no, no, no. God has something for you to do right now exactly where you are. His will is never for you to be waiting and just kind of doing nothing until you get there. In fact, if you're just waiting until you get there, you probably never will get there. But I've learned this. Waiting seasons are unavoidable in our life. See, I think if I asked you a question, I think if I said, who in here is excited about some opportunity that's coming up on the future, whether it's your life, somebody else's life, but until that day comes, you're kind of just waiting. I think every hand would go up because all the high schoolers in here would be like, yeah, college, college. All the college people would be like, ah, work and actually making money and stop paying people for me to learn. And then all the people that are working would be like, retirement, I'm sick of working, let's get done. <laughs> Some lady said, amen. That's how we feel. We all feel like, okay, I'm excited about something coming up, but until then, I'm just kind of waiting. We all have some idea of wh where we want our life to be. But until then, it's like, well, I'm here. I knew God wanted me to be a pastor when I was 17 years old. I did not know he was going to ask me to go to school for seven years and actually wait till I was 24 to start. It was a lot of waiting. Waiting seasons are unavoidable. And I think sometimes we don't know how to wait well. Let me tell you how I think we often wait. I think we spend a lot of our time focused on getting to something or getting through something. Just hear me out, hear me out, okay? We're like, oh, right, if I could just get to college, then you get there. Oh, if I could just get through college and get to a job, then you get there and you don't like the position that they gave you. So you're like, oh, if I could just get through this position and then to another position, and then you're like, you know what, maybe I don't like to work at all, actually. Oh, if I could just get through the week and get to the weekend, right? We spend so much time waiting, just getting to, getting through, and I had to preach this to myself, okay? Because I do this in ministry. I know. Sinner, okay? Sorry. But sometimes I'm like, oh, man, if I could just get to the weekend. Then you get to the weekend. Oh, if I could just get through the weekend. And God convicted me. Because we spend so much time getting to or getting through that we miss the opportunity he has for us while we're in. Whatever it is we're in. I know I have not read a scripture. I will get to the scripture. I just want to prepare our hearts for the word of God when it's preached so it actually does something. Because God's will for your life is not to be focused on what's next. God's will for your life is to be fully invested in what's now. There's stuff for you to do now. Don't just get to and get through. God has something for you to do in the wait. 
I know you're waiting. And when the time comes for you to move on, amazing. But let's handle the waiting season correctly because I think we often waste the wait. So here's the title of my message. And faith that God's going to give you something out of it. Repeat after me. Say, don't waste the wait. One more time. Don't waste the wait. I got this idea from Acts chapter 24. Let me give you some context of what's going on in Acts chapter 24. Basically, the apostle Paul gets falsely accused of starting all these riots. So this mob forms and they drag Paul in front of this Roman procurator named Felix. Felix is essentially just a Roman judge. So Paul has to present his case in front of this Roman judge named Felix. And he's sitting there and he's trying to say, like, I am innocent. I have not started riots. I haven't done anything. So Felix hears the case. But Felix is kind of procrastinating and he makes Paul wait. Watch, it says in verse 22 and 23, it says, At that point, Felix, that's the Roman procurator, who was quite familiar with the way, that's actually what Christians were called back in the early first century, Familiar with the way he adjourned the hearing and he said, hey, wait until Lysias, the garrison commander, arrives. Then I will decide the case. He ordered an officer to keep Paul in custody, but to give him some freedom and allow his friends to visit him and take care of his needs. So if you're following, Paul's like, I don't know what to, I mean, Felix is like, I don't know what to decide yet. So Paul, go back in custody. And actually, Felix was a little bit curious about Christianity. So he'd like peek back in the jail cell and be like, tell me a little bit about Jesus. And then he would keep coming back and asking questions. And uh, Paul would talk to him. So it says in verse 24 and 25, a few days later, Felix came back with his wife, Drusilla. I'm just, I didn't say it. You laughed already, Drusilla. Anybody pregnant in here? May I suggest to you a name? Six pounds, eight ounce, Drusilla. All right. A few days later, Felix came back with Drusilla, daughter of Godzilla. That's it. We're moving on. A few days later, Felix came back with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish. Sending for Paul, they listened as Paul talked to them about faith in Jesus Christ. As Paul reasoned with them about righteousness and self-control in the coming day of judgment, Felix became frightened. Now it's important because Roman authorities did not show emotion. So like Paul preaches to this guy while he's in prison and this Roman judge gets gripped from the inside by the Holy Spirit, but he's not really wanting to commit to Jesus still. So Felix says, go away for now, he replied. When it's more convenient, I'll call for you again. So Felix is playing this like cat and mouse game. Like, Paul, tell me about Jesus. Oh, that's convicting. I don't want to hear it. Paul, tell me a little more. Uh, Maybe later. And he's just procrastinating in his faith. But it's the next verse that threw me off. Because it's just one verse in the Bible. But when you read it, watch it. Verse 27. After two years. How many years? After two years went by in this way. Felix was succeeded by Portius Festus. And because Felix wanted to gain favor with the Jewish people, he left Paul in prison. In the Bible, it's one quick little verse, but in real time, Paul sat in that prison cell waiting for two years. Paul's in jail. If anybody had an excuse to waste the wait, if anybody had an excuse to say, well, what can God really do with me right now? I'm just kind of sitting here waiting for him to do. If anybody could have made excuses, it was Paul. He was in prison. What was he going to do? But then God started dealing with me about how different the two characters was. You had Felix, who was a free man, procrastinating in his faith. And then you have Paul, who is a prisoner, being proactive and still preaching the gospel even though he's in jail. Our situations do not always determine as much as we think they do. Our situations are not always the thing that's limiting us from doing what God is asking us to do. So God started to deal with me and how I handle those waiting seasons. Those seasons where you're doing something temporary, right? Like I'm not always gonna be in this job. 
I'm not always going to be, you know, the parent of a little toddler. I'm not always going to be in this. One day I am going to fill in the blank. But until that day comes, I'm just waiting. Right. But Paul shows me there's a right way to wait and there's a wrong way to wait. And I think if we're not careful, we will waste our wait and then we're not prepared to move on to the next thing when it actually comes. So I'm going to show you four things to do in the wait. Four little declarations you can talk to yourself so that we do not waste our wait. You ready? Here's the first one. In the wait, I will watch. Everybody say watch. In Psalms 130 verse 6, it compares waiting to watching. Check this out. It says, I wait for the Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning. Yes, more than the watchmen wait for the morning. Waiting is compared to being like a watchman. Now, what did watchmen do? They watched. I know, crazy, right? Very creative. They watched. See, they were stationed at night. They knew that morning was coming, but until the morning came, their job was to watch and say, okay, till it gets here, what do I need to do? And I started thinking about like, man, this is Paul. Paul is literally waiting for what he knows is going to come next. He, he's supposed to preach the word to the world. He, he's supposed to, but he can't right now. He's in prison. His body is locked up, but his eyes are open. He's watching for the opportunity that he has, even if it is not the opportunity that he wants. Good waiting always starts with good watching. Saying, Lord, I know that morning's coming. I know that something else is on the horizon. But until that day, would you open my eyes to see what I need to see in this season and be responsible for it? That's what he's doing. And I started to think about how after I graduated college, I was 22 or 23 years old, I worked at this grocery store called Ralph's. I had uh, moved from Oklahoma and I was living in Los Angeles getting my Master's of Divinity. It sounds like a Harry Potter degree. It's basically just stuff about the Bible. So I'm sitting there, and y'all, you talk about a waiting season, okay? I'm supposed to be preaching the good news, and your boy's bagging canned goods, just beep, beep. Thank you for shopping at Ralph's. Would you like to sign up for a promotion card? No, nobody ever does. Thank you. Just kidding. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and man, I try to not speak disrespectfully about my boss. She... The Lord loved her. He did. The Lord loved her a lot. I, she was a real Drusilla, if you know what I mean, okay? <laughs> She's just a real Drusilla. And she would get so mad sometimes and be so rude. And there were several times, like, we all knew she was wrong, and she'd never apologize. Like, one time we had to undo everything she told us to do. Like, corporate came to our store in L.A. and was like, undo it all. And we were like, Laura, this wasn't what we were supposed to do. And she would never apologize. She just, ooh. I had to pray for her. The Lord's testing me. Anyway, I remember saying, like, man, if I ever lead anybody, I'm going to try to be really kind. And you know what? If I make a mistake, I'm going to be very quick to apologize. Because the people under me probably respect me more for it, not think less of me for it. And I did not know that just two years after that, I would actually be leading a little team here in Victoria, Texas in the next gen. But you know what's funny? I think I'm a better leader at Faith Family Church because I was a watchful employee at Ralph's Grocery Store. It's weird how it works, but listen, God will not waste a season of your life if you keep your eyes open. If you keep your eyes open, even in a waiting season, he will show you lessons from the good and from the bad. So in the wait, the first thing we got to do is watch. Everybody say watch. Now here's the second thing. In the wait, I will Act. Everybody say act. This is what I've learned. Read the Bible. God uses busy people. You're not going to find somebody that's just lounging around and God's like, you. You've been watching ESPN for 30 days straight. Get ready. <laughs> hey, man, no, I'm going to go watch the Warriors game seven at 2.30 just like you, whoever watches ESPN, okay? But... When God called David, David, uh, when he called David to be the king, David was busy tending sheep, working hard at what God put in front of him in that season. And God said, oh, I could use that. 
when God called Peter, James, and John, they weren't lounging around doing nothing. They were working hard at what was uh, in their hand at that season. They were fishing, and God said, oh, they're busy. I could use that. When God brought Boaz to Ruth, Ruth wasn't just lounging around. Ruth was harvesting grain, trying to make a living for her, her family as a single woman. And God was like, man, she's still working hard. I can use that. What am I saying? I'm saying this. Of course, God wants us to live in the reality of eventually one day. But he always wants us to work hard for today. God evaluates how active we are in the wait. And I realized that this was Paul. Paul could have just sat there and been like, well, what can I really do? But he was still active in the wait. He said, no, 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 I'm in prison, sure, but there's still something I can do. There's still somebody I could preach to. There's still someone I could reach for Jesus. Waiting is active. I'll prove it to you. One of the most common scriptures we have on waiting is Isaiah 40, verse 31. It says this, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up, that's active, with wings like eagles. They shall run. That's active. And a lot of y'all been avoiding that activity hard. I'm saying. <laughs> they shall walk and not faint. Those are active, th- active ways of waiting. See, a lot of times we don't want to act till we have the perfect circumstance. And God is like, hey, I am the perfect God. You don't need to have the perfect circumstance. You just need to be proactive. Start doing something with what I put in your hand already. It takes faith to walk by faith. But then again, think about that saying, we walk by, it does not say we lay down and take a nap by faith. Ah, Sometimes I wish it did. We walk by faith. We got to start moving. I don't know where this saying came from, but I like it. It says, God can't steer a parked car. I mean, I'm sure God could do whatever he wants. I'm not saying that's in the Bible, but I like it. God can't steer a parked car. You know what it means? It means we just want direction all the time, and we're like, God, just give me direction. And he's like, hey, we'll start moving, and maybe God will start to turn the wheel a little bit. Get active. But I think a lot of times we sit in the parking lot, got the car in park, both hands on the wheels, and we're like, Lord, show me, and I'll go. Everybody say that. Show, and I'll go. That is our formula. Lord, show and I'll go. Let me show you God's formula. Genesis 12, 1, God's talking to a guy named Abram. It says, the Lord has said to Abram, go from your country, your people, your father's household to the land I will show. Wait, that messes our formula up. Because we like to be like, Lord, just show and I'll go. And God's like, no, no, no. What do you think walk by faith means? How about go and I'll show? No, 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 God, just show and I'll go. A lot of times we're sitting there like, man, if God would just give me some direction, I would take action. And God's like, I'm a God who responds to faith. So how about you start to take action and then I'll give you direction. It's flipped. That's called walking by faith. God has incredible things for you to do right now. You got to watch in the wait. You got to act in the wait. And if you want direction for later, man, start to take action right now. God calling you to start a business, that's good. You might not have the resources for it, All I don't know. But if he's calling you to start a business, what can you do now? You can manage your personal finances well now. Students, God calls you to be a leader one day, all right, don't be a follower at school. Why would you act different than how God's calling you to act in the future? Do do it right now. Yo, I'm so proud of my wife. My wife has wanted to be used by God in medicine for probably 12 years or more. And she about to graduate as a physician associate in January, somebody. You might catch me in a different car than the 15-year-old one I'm driving. Better chill. (laughs) But really, my wife has been wanting to be used by God in medicine for 12 years. It's been 12 years, and she's still not where she wants to be. She's still waiting. But guess what? It's been a very active waiting. See, in high school, she was already taking pre-AP classes. And and I met her at college at 18 years old, and she was working for free in cancer research labs just to get her resume better. 
Then when she did graduate with her bio pre-med degree in college and she was still trying to get into med school, she was working horrible jobs in Los Angeles, keeping her feet steady, her eyes focused. Why? Because God put something in our heart for one day, but he always put something in your hand for today. What is in your hand? What is in your hand? It's like with Moses. Moses is like, God tells Moses, go set the people free. He's like, I can't do all that. I can't take action. What do you want me to do? What you got in your hand, God said? A stick. We about to kick butt with that stick, Moses. Let's start to take action. God's will. Listen, God wants to, to fulfill all the dreams in your heart. But the greatest test of your faith is your faithfulness. So if you have faith for the future, then prove it with faithfulness in the present. If you got faith for the future, prove it with faithfulness in the present. God is asking us to watch in the wait, act in the wait, and third, in the wait I will improve. Everybody say improve. God always wants us to be improving in our wait. Now let me go back to Paul, because in Acts chapter 24, Paul is sitting in that prison cell, right? I just showed you. But that's even more astonishing when you realize that in Acts chapter 23, the, just one chapter before, he's not in a prison cell. He's having a conversation with God. Look what God tells him. Acts 23, 11. That night, the Lord appeared to Paul and said, be encouraged, Paul. Just as you've been a witness to me here in Jerusalem, you must preach the good news in Rome as well. One chapter before, God's like, hey, Paul, pack your bags, buddy. You're taking the gospel to Rome. You're going to cross that sea. You're going to talk to all those Romans. One chapter later, from 23 to 24, Paul is not preaching in Rome. He is sitting in jail in a city of Judea, a thousand miles away from where he knows God just called him. And he'll be there for two years. Over two years. He's supposed to be a preacher in Rome. He's a prisoner in Judea. He could have had so many excuses. How is God going to develop me and what I know he's called me to if I'm sitting in this thing? But Paul chose to improve in the way. One more time. Everybody say improve. improve. Let me explain what I mean because I started thinking about it. Like, like Paul, he couldn't go speak to all of Rome like God just asked him to do. But what could he do? He could talk to one Roman named Felix, who was the judge. And I started thinking about it. Like, Paul got to try out his sermons on this guy. That's what I do all the time. I'll talk to somebody, and if they don't receive it, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to preach on that. That was a dumb idea anyway. <laughs> he got to try out his jokes. A first service, they're where I try out my jokes. If they, if they laugh, then it makes it here. And then if you don't laugh, the problem's you, not them. He got to try out his logic. He got to try out his sermon. And I started to think like, man, that's crazy. If our eyes are open, if we're willing to act, if we're willing to improve, God can develop you anywhere that you're faithful. God's not looking for you to have the best location. Oh, well, I wanted to develop so-and-so, but I, they just were in. No, he can develop you anywhere that you're faithful. So watch this. Paul knows in his heart, because he just talked to God in Acts chapter 23, he knows one day I'm going to cross the sea and I'm going to preach to all of Rome. But right now I can't. So what can I do? I can cross my jail cell and I can talk to one Roman. Yet he who is faithful with little will be given much. And one day, Paul did get out of jail. One day, Paul did eventually make it to Rome. And he got to practice and preach all those sermons. And I think he had this moment as he was preaching in Rome where he looked back on that two years waiting in that jail cell in Judea and thought, wow, the prison prepared me for this? That I, what? And, and my prayer for you is that as you're faithful in whatever season you're in right now, you'll look back and you'll say the same thing. Like that job prepared me for this? The breakup, the, the heartbreak, the home life. I thought it was a wasted season. And God says, no, if I'm in it, there is no such thing as a wasted season. It's a waiting season. God is allowing you to improve in the wait. And the cool thing is just like with Paul, as you improve in the wait, he's behind the scenes preparing the way. God is always preparing you for what he has prepared for you. 
So maybe where you are feels like nothing to do with where you want to be. Well, I have good news. God's ability to develop you is not limited by your location. It's limited only if you do nothing. So do not do nothing. Most of us aren't in permanent seasons, but God's still working, so you keep working too. Now, let me end this sermon. In the wait, I will watch, I will act, I will improve, and lastly, in the wait, I will trust. Everybody say trust. I've realized this. Waiting tests your trust. Sometimes waiting and trusting feel like they're the same thing, don't they? Even in the Bible, check this out. I read to you Isaiah 40, 31. It says, uh, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. But some translations say it like this. But those who <laughs> trust in the Lord. That word can mean either thing, wait or trust. And it makes sense because waiting forces you to make a decision. Either I trust God or I don't. Waiting is trusting if you can wait the right way. Well, how do you wait the right way? Well, first you watch. What opportunity has God given you right now? And when you see it, then you act. Okay, I might not be able to do everything I want, but I can do something I want. I'll watch, I act. And he doesn't just want you to do it and go through the motions, but he wants you to improve and do it with excellence. And when you act, when you watch, act, improve, it shows God, I'm, I'm trusting you. So watch this, okay? I didn't wanna just give you some word that you think about Sunday and not think about the rest of the week. Truth is, God gave me this word probably two to three years ago and I wrote it down on a little piece of paper and I wanted to make sure I remembered it every time I felt like I was stuck in a waiting season. So what do we do? How do we not waste the wait? We, we help me media people put it all together. You might have caught it, but if you want to remember how to wait, I made it easy for you. You watch, you act, improve, trust. Watch, act, improve, trust. And when you put all the first letters of those words together, it spells what? Watch, act, improve, trust. And when you do that, you're throwing your hands up in surrender saying, Lord, I trust that you're working. God, I know that I'm here and, and you probably have different plans for me in the future, but I'm not going to waste this season. I know it's hard to show up to something every single day that doesn't feel like it's where you're supposed to be for the long run. It just feels like you're waiting. But if you will wait the way God asks you, he will not just make that season bearable, he'll make it fruitful. You'll look back. And I say this all the time, but let me close with the example of David. You know, David, David was called to be the king. And then he sent back to the shepherd's field for years. Think how frustrating that would be. What do you do? You've heard me say this probably. What do you do when you have the call of a king but the job of a shepherd? You tend sheep like a king. And that's exactly what he did. A lion would come to take his sheep. He'd kill the lion. For me, I'd be like, oh, I'm supposed to be on the throne in a few years, Mr. Lion. You could have that sheep. You can't get me, though. Not him. A bear came, same thing. He killed the bear, why? Because how he tended to those sheep would represent one day how he tended to his people and his kingdom. And then he goes to face Goliath and Goliath looks at him and he says, what makes you think you're prepared to fight me? And David looks back and he says, I've been tending sheep. And Goliath's probably like, okay. And then he keeps talking and he's like, oh, let me expound on that. See, I've been in a waiting season, but I haven't been taking off days. The lion came, killed it. Bear came, killed it. In the same way that I killed the lion and the bear, I'm about to knock you out. You thought, you thought that it was a wasted season. It wasn't a wasted season. It was a waiting season. And that's God's word for you today. Be faithful where you are. And this will not be wasted time. It'll be waiting time where God develops you, improves you, and enables you to step into whatever the thing he has next is. And when you step into it, you'll look back like David and said, oh, I've been waiting for this. Very, very, very literally, I have been waiting for this and I've been active, I've been improving, and I've been trusting God. You received that this morning. Amen. All right, I need to end this. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, I thank you that you're a good God. Lord, I thank you that you know exactly what you're calling us to do in each and every situation, God, and you're never calling us to just sit there and do nothing. Lord, help us watch, act, improve, and trust, and in doing so, help us wait on you with all of our heart. Help us know that you're, on he- you're in heaven. We are on earth. Our words, will be sh- our words will be few, God. You are a good God who knows exactly where we need to be and can get us there with no problem. God, let our faithfulness prove our faith in the one who's sovereign above everything else. Hey, with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to end this uh, sermon and asking you two questions that we always ask when we come to church. They're basically just questions to make sure that you and God are on good terms. So here's the first question I want you to think about. If you're in here today and you really don't know if you and God are good, like if God saw you right now, you don't know how he would act, he doesn't want you to worry about that. He wants you to know he loves you. See, a lot of people show up and they think, oh, me and God are good as long as I do enough right things. That is not the gospel. The gospel is when we recognize that I could never do enough right things, but Jesus loved me not so that I, Jesus loved me not, not because I changed. Jesus loves me so that I can change. So if you're in here and you're like, man, Pastor G, I just try to do good enough, but today I wanna put my faith in Jesus. I wanna accept him as the Lord and Savior of my life. Then here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna count to three. I'm just gonna ask you to raise your hand wherever you're at. I'm not going to make you stand up. I'm just gonna pray for you where you're at. I'm gonna stay where I'm at. But the Bible says this, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. So if you're in here and you're like, this is me, I wanna place my faith, not in me and my works, but I wanna place my faith in Jesus and his love for me and I really wanna follow God. If that's you, then on the count of three, would you just raise your hand so I can know who I'm praying for? That's you, you say, today I wanna follow Jesus. One, two, three, anybody like that? Awesome, see you, see you, see you, see you, see you, see you. Man, that's awesome. Keep your hands up for me if I can so I can see who I'm praying for. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let me ask you a second question. If you're in here today and you say, Pastor G, at one point I was following God, but man, I haven't been following him. I've just been treating it like it's not that big of a deal, doing it my own way whenever I feel like it. But today, man, something was stirring on the inside of me and I know that God's real and I know that I gotta go all in. If you're in here and you're like, I wanna rededicate my life to God, I wanna make a fresh commitment to take this thing seriously. Then on the count of three, would you raise your hand? One, two, three, anybody like that? Man, awesome, 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 awesome. So proud of you guys, love to see this. Let's do this, would you put your hand on your heart? Could you all repeat after me? Say, Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner, but I know you're a savior. Thank you for loving me when I didn't care about you. Thank you for running me down when I was running away. Make me new. And if I fall, give me the grace to get back up. Put people in my path who will lead me to you. I believe that you are Lord. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Will you give a hand clap to the people that prayed that prayer? And hey, uh, first of all, I just want to say we're so proud of you. Second of all, I want to say that we don't just want to help you start your walk with God. We want to help you walk it out. So there's a couple things I want to tell you about. First of all, there's people that are wearing these name tags that say, how can I help? If you have questions, man, please pull them aside. Other than that, we have a gift to give you if you prayed that prayer. It's in a white little packet at the exit areas as you leave. But There's a couple things in the packet. One of them is a baptism card. The Bible says believe and be baptized. After we get saved, the next step is to be baptized. And it's a sign that you go under the water, your old life's gone, you come up, you're raised to life with Christ. There's also a book called 30 Days to New Beginning. It's essentially this uh, book that our pastors have written to help you, I describe it, it's like a runway, right? A plane needs that little runway to help it take off. This is like a runway for starting a new life with Christ. So please get that. Um, But hey, we want to make baptism easy for you. So if you're here and you just gave your life to God, here's here's the first step you could take. 
be baptized. Like I said, the Bible says, believe and be baptized. So if you're interested in that, there's cards in the back of the seat. I'm also going to get off the stage and that's, that slide is going to be up and it's going to help you uh, know all the ways that you can register to be baptized. Anyways, Faith Family, you guys are amazing. We thank you. Love you. Have a good day. Well, I'm going to say a closing blessing over you uh, this morning. But first, can we tell Pastor G again how grateful we are? Yeah, for... There's a whole lot of prayer and a whole lot of hard work that goes into feeding us as well as he just fed us this morning, isn't there? And I know you are grateful for that because God wants his flock to be healthy and God wants his flock to prosper and he wants our lives to go well. Amen? I want you to say this with me too before I say the closing blessing. I want you to say the difference between living in the wilderness and living in the promised land is the weight. Say it one more time. The difference between living in the wilderness and living in the promised land is my weight. You know, it only took him three months to go out of Egypt to Mount Sinai, which the Israelites called Mount Horeb because it was covered with fire. And God wanted to make their nation great. So you know what he did? He had them wait for almost a year at the base of that mountain. And he called Moses up on the top of that mountain for 40 days, gave him the Ten Commandments and a lot of other laws. When Moses came down, they made a golden calf, and they were worshiping that golden calf. And Moses took the Ten Commandments, and he threw it on the ground, and the stones broke. So if you ever wonder who was the first man to break all Ten Commandments at once, it was Moses, all right? He had to go back up for 40 days. Now it's 80 days. And he came down and he started teaching the people. And there was, a, there was a, a, a sanctuary, just like there's a sanctuary here for you to learn to honor God. And God gave them all the laws. Then it was only 11 days to march into their promised land. But they were fearful and they never lived in it because they didn't handle, everybody say, the weight. What a great message. See, some of us, you're in the weight. You're going to have that great marriage. You're going to... Do those things God called you to do because how many of you know God's working on the inside of you, right? You're not, you're not just doing nothing. You're growing in his house. So let's stand to our feet. I want to say this blessing over you that God once pronounced repeatedly over his people. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Would you high five two or three people? Tell them it was great to see them in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen.